Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing TV, and today we're going to be taking a peek into an update with the Fab Filter Pro Q3, one I really love. They've been listening to their audience, and one thing I'm sure they've been asked a bunch is, hey, I set up a dynamic cut. Like, let's just say you're working, you set up a dynamic cut, and you're like, cool, it's a compression cut. I'd like to be able to sidechain this so that it only cuts when the other, when the sidechain signal comes in. That way you can do like really advanced side chaining with only mid side. And you can do this so easy because right, you could side chain just the mid channel, like just some crazy eff effective ways of side chaining that get really, really clean responses, but it's usually a, a huge pain to set up. Well, they've done it. They've finally done it. All you do is click auto. You click this little guy right here, this uh, trigger input. And this will link up the side chain. I'm just gonna call it the side chain button. And it works, like that's it, then you're all done. So let's go ahead, let's use it in a mix and let me show you uh, the power that's been handed to us. Okay, so I have this, this piece of audio here. This is what it sounds like. Okay, cool. So I want to now direct your ears to listen for how the kick and the snare sit here because they don't sit that great. They're really covered up. But the thing is, if I use regular side chaining methods to get them sort of uncovered, what ends up happening is I usually get quite a bit of noticeable pumping. And there are ways I could balance it out. But what I'm going to show you here, the ability to just do it on individual, like the, only the mid channel and the side channel and in only specific areas of the spectrum allows for just a shockingly clean version with basically no pumping. So that's pretty amazing. So just listen for the kick and snare here because those are the things we're going to clean up. So the snare is definitely being pushed down and the kick's being muffled by quite a bit. So let's go ahead, let's fix that. Also, I know parts of my signal chain are clipping in areas. Some of it I did on purpose. Some of it is just the fact that this is a an old project, a really old project. So let's come in here and let's go to, for our first bass sound is this. And our second bass sound is this. Those are gonna be the things that we're gonna be side chaining with our kick and our snare. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take the kick and the snare and I'm going to route them to an additional track. So I'm gonna route them here. Both those guys are gonna come here and I'm gonna name this the side chain input. And the reason I'm doing them into one track is because I only have one input for the side chain. So I need everything that's gonna be side chain to go to the same track. So they're going to this track now. And now what we're gonna do is I do not want this track to go out to the master. So I'm gonna turn that off so I don't get doubled up on kick and snare. And now I'm going to side chain this to my two other tracks. That's a little bit different than how you do it in other DAWs. Uh, so the way I'm gonna do it is I just hold shift click and it looks like nothing's being sent there. Like you see here we have signal and here there's like no signal, but that's how side chain information is sent. So it doesn't send the actual audio. It sends the audio, but only the information of the audio. The actual sound doesn't go there. That's how it works in FL. That's, that's just how it works. And I'm also gonna send that to the sub bass channel because that's the other one we wanna look at. And now I'm gonna add a fab filter to this first one. And I'm gonna come in and the version of the plugin that you load will change whether or not the sidechain input is available. I think you have to have the VST3 input. That's typically how it is. I haven't checked it personally, but just so you know, if it doesn't show up, that could be the potential problem. So I'm gonna click this cog icon in FL, I'm gonna click this next icon, and then I'm gonna go to the processing tab. So it's kind of a couple tabs, but you come in here and you'll see a stereo sidechain input. And I'm going to go ahead and put sidechain, that's because that's what we named our channel, that's why it's called that. If you called it kick, it would show up as kick. And there we have it, it's been set up. So now I'm gonna add a node, and I want to sidechain the low end and some region of the high end. I want them to side chain the mid channel, so I'm gonna make them both mid. Notice how stinking simple this is. Like, it's just amazing. Personally love this. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add a cut here. When it comes down, I'm gonna go for like the lower region of the kick. And we, you know what we can do to get really fancy? We can add a fab filter on here, on the kick. And for the kick one, we're gonna name it K. 
kick. And we'll actually, with a slash, because I was typing fast, and we'll do the same for the snare. We'll add a fab filter again, and we will call this snare. And we can use these to see exactly where the spectrum hits here. So first I want to see my kick, so I'll turn that on. And let's put a node right at the low end of the kick. Right there. So the red spectrum was the kick. So it's right there, they overlap. I'm going to make this kind of big and bring the cue up just a smidge. And I'm also going to add one more, and this is just going to be the side channel. And this is to try and catch some of the upper harmonics. And I'm also gonna add a cut for this and make this one, this cue a bit, or this band a bit wide. Can't remember, small cue is wide band, big cue is narrow band. That's how it works. And cool, so we've got that set up. Now let's set up the snare, and then we'll hook it up to the side chain. So we'll do the snare, and let's look for where the snares pops up. Right there, clear as day. And we'll bring one in there, and we'll also bring the cue up to make it more narrow. And now we're going to set them up to work with the side chain. Now this is really cool because we're only doing the mid channel. So a lot of the side information will go right on through. And then we're taking some of the high end to get a little bit of the crispness of the two sounds out. I meant to say crispness. It might've sounded like I said Christmas. So we're getting a little bit of the high information out through the side channel. So it's just gonna be a nice combo. Something, you know, really fancy side chain we're doing here. So I'm gonna click on auto and just hook it up to the side chain by clicking there. Do it for all three bands. And we should have one side chain set up and ready to go. Uh, so let's go ahead, let's do a before. And let's listen to this spot since it doesn't have that second bass there, right there. So this is what it sounds like without our fancy side chaining. <laughs> All right, here it is with it on. It's like, it's really transparent. Like you you can't hear any pumping on the source sound. Like that's, that's, that's really nice when you can get an effect like this to work like this. And we could add additional bands that aren't side chained that could work on within the same instance. So let's say, okay, I want to I want to bring up the side information right here since this is cutting the mids. And we could create a unique space, and this one would be working on the input sound, while these ones work off of the threshold that we set. So maybe I come in here, I just do a general boost. I'm not going to do any dynamic work here. Versus. So we get a little more pushed off to the sides, which also helps with the kick and the snare coming through. So, all right, so there's the first sound. Let's go ahead and do it to the second one. So we'll add a fab filter and there it is. And we're gonna do the same thing, processing. I'm going quick now, but just setting up our routing. And we're gonna come in here and set up a similar deal. I'm gonna make this a mid channel. We're going to do a cut. Let's look at where our kick is and we see it's right over there. Let's make our cue a little bit wider. Bring in a dynamic, and we're, we just want to do a dynamic cut. We don't want to do a you know, permanent cut. And we'll set that up with the side chain, and we'll do the same thing for the snare, which is already pretty dang close to what we want. And we'll bring this on down. And let's uh, get out of our way, please. And we'll do that. Bring the gain down. So uh, that's not what I meant to do. Let's bring our game back up to zero. Bring the cut down. And this is gonna affect the sound over here because that's where this sound comes in. And we need to set up the side chain. And here, I think we could really benefit from a, another side. Another side dynamic cut. We'll bring the cue down some. And this one will crush a bit harder. Why not? We'll see if we like it or not. My computer's struggling because I have a couple of programs open at once. And my buffer size is also really low. I didn't change that before I started. All 
right, so the moment of truth, let's do a before and afters. Okay, so I did a little bit of rebalancing just to just sort of dial things in a tad better. And I'm gonna do a before and after with that so you hear what it sounds like dry first. So here it is uh, as a before, just listen to how the kick and snare sit together with these bass sounds. <laughs> All right, now let's turn them on and let's hear how they sit now. Now this is just after like one or two minutes of fiddling, right? So the snare comes through significantly better. I feel like I could still work with the kit quite a bit and come get it to come through. And as a mix as a whole, I feel like I could definitely merge them and get a more unified sound. But overall, that is a this is just an amazing workflow to be able to pick up bands like this, affect channels like this, and do side chaining that is this transparent and this easy to set up. If you have any questions, let me know and have a blessed day.